Well, this is Dr. Stan back here at Radio Liberty, and uh, and basically on the 13th and 14th of November, there's going to be certainly a massive uh, exercise that's going to involve Mexico and Canada, the United States, as to what would happen if the electricity went off. And basically, of course, it's being sponsored by government agencies, and certainly, uh, certainly some of the, certainly the public utilities are going to participate, some hospitals, but most people have never even heard about it. Most public utilities and hospitals are not going to be involved. Some people say this is going to be a catastrophic event. Other people say probably nothing is going to happen. How could you be going to have a major exercise on the 13th and 14th of November, and nobody hears about it? Now, you can go up on the internet and check out what we're saying, and you'll find it's true. We don't know what's going to happen. I suspect nothing is going to happen. Oh, uh, then, of course, the following day, that would be Friday or Saturday, I uh, suddenly there's going to be a major comet. It's going to be passing fairly close to the United States as it zooms around the sun, comes back again in Sydney in December. And is that going to create some problems? We don't know. Uh, any one of these things could have significance. It could have significance. We do know that the people who run America know exactly exactly what's coming down the line. they made preparations for a difficult period that lies ahead, but they're certainly not telling us when this is going to occur, other than the fact that, as Jet at the Palatano, remember the Trilateral Commission, remember the Council on Foreign Relations, Secretary of the Office of Homeland Security until the end of August of this year, um, she basically made a, a speech on the 27th of August talking about the major cyber event that is going to have a severe effect on our lives, our economy, on every aspect of uh, human relationships, and we better move fast. And But she won't tell us what it's all about. Or maybe she was just trying to scare us. We don't know, but we do know the other side has, has holds the reins of power, and they're making preparations for something. What it is, well, we'll learn as time goes by. Our plea to you is begin making your preparations for a major cataclysmic event. Hope and pray it doesn't occur, but if it does occur, at least you'll be prepared for it. Because if it were to come to pass, the vast majority of the American people would be wiped out and impoverished. Uh, let's go to John, calling from Spokane. If you have a question or comment for our guest, Melody Cedarstrom. Hi, John. How are we doing? Uh, doing good. Do you have a question for our guest? Well, I've got a, more of a comment about this whole thing with the Grid X2 and, and what have you. You know, I've been listening to your program with uh, Bob Fletcher. Um, I'd done research on this Planet X uh, quite a bit before I heard uh, his program on it. And uh, I recently, after listening to him, I went up on uh, on the Internet. And one of the things that when they first spotted, I think it was uh, not too long ago, a year, a year and a half ago, something like that, when they spotted, spotted Comet Ison, uh, the right, named after the Russian guy who spotted it. Um, that was like a like a a distraction type of thing. There was there was information about Planet X, and they wanted people's attention off it, so they distracted pretty high level scientists. Um, what they're saying is that this so called comet is not a comet, and it doesn't have the properties of a comet. It's way too big. No, and, uh, this is different than Planet X. You're separating the planet from the co Planet X. No, 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 no. That's okay. the point. Okay, fine. Go ahead. The, the, the point is, is to get our attention off of Planet X, you see, this incoming body that we can see that has been visible, they've called it Comet Ison. And so I dismissed it because I figured it was Comet, blah, blah, blah. And then recently what I've been seeing is uh, information where when they analyze this comet Ison and its trajectory and all its various things, what it is, it's, it's Planet X. It's not a comet. It is actually Planet X. And the reason why it looks like a, a uh, comet is because of all the debris, whether it's the space debris or whether it's moons or whatever, that it's dragging along with it. And the reason why we've been having all this crazy weather with this recent typhoon and everything else is because of the activity that's been occurring in our solar system. Because of this being in our uh, in our solar system, the effect it's already had with uh, 
I think it's Jupiter and Neptune. I'm not sure. I think it was those two. And then because it's been on the back side of the sun, the reason why we've had such a low incidence of uh, solar flares during a year where we should be having solar, uh, uh, you know, solar maximums is because it's all been going off on the backside because of what's been going on with uh, this planet that's been coming in. It comes in from the south around the backside from our vantage point of the sun, and when it makes its loop around, then it's going to be visible, and we're going to see it. Um, and but. What happens is, is then there will be a certain point in time where there's going to be a pole shift. It gets kind of complicated from there. People should actually go and research this. But during the pole shift, that's when all hell breaks loose. And it's, it's a 3,600-year cycle, and it's coincidental with even incidents in the Bible. All right. Well, now, basically, John, when do you anticipate this is going to happen? Well, um, from the data that I've got, originally it was supposed to happen... The time schedule was we would see it um, December of 2012, and then the pole shift would be in February. But it's actually, because of the Gregorian calendar, we're a year off because of the, the synchronization between the Gregorian calendar and the timing of this whole thing. And so it's this year, this, uh, it'll be visible during, uh, uh, during December and pole shift sometime in February or something. So um, I just suggest people go up and do their own research on it and, and, uh, and then uh, decide accordingly. All right, fine. Then do you think that, uh, that Bob Fletcher is correct or not? Oh, I definitely think he's correct. Okay, fine. Um, We're going to have to let you go because we do want to get the people in that want to talk about what Melody, but I appreciate so much your calling. It's fascinating. Yeah. I'll have to admit, I haven't made my mind. I haven't done the research. I appreciate you doing the research, and I appreciate your calling. I do believe there's some major event, and maybe this is what it's all about. That could be. Anyway, God bless, and thanks. Please uh, keep us posted. You keep on top of it and let us know, will you? I will. Okay, fine. Uh, Melody, do you have any knowledge at all about this? Because I certainly, this is not my field of expertise, although I have a great deal of confidence in Bob Fletcher. I, I have told him. I, I just am not certain. Uh, certainly, I hope he's wrong, but I'm not saying he is at all. So I think that there are certainly things out there we really don't know about. But something big is in the offing. I'm just not certain what. 